Shabbat in your home. I've got my wonderful family around with me. Uh, my dad and my mom are away for just a little bit on a much needed getaway. They're enjoying the parks and stuff of the United States and just needed to get away. Um, so we're here holding down the fort and we're gonna be leading you into the wonderful evening tonight. So we thought we would bring you into our home, to my house. Usually we're at my parents' home and enjoying Shabbat. So we just thought we would switch it up a little bit and we're gonna open up the table and open up the evening. So if you wanna go ahead and have your elements ready, we would love for you to join us for the Kiddush. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, asher kitshanu b'mitzvotah v'tzivanu lehiotor legoim v'natan lanu et Yeshua meshichenu or haolam. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. You have sanctified us with your word. You commanded us to be a light unto the nations. And you gave us Yeshua our Messiah, who is the light of the world. Amen. Amen. Now we're going to bless the cup. And when Jesus raised this up with his disciples, he said, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is being poured out for you. So all of your sin and the shame from the sin is far removed so that he remembers it even no longer. And you are now a new creation through Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so Yeshua prayed this prayer in Hebrew. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei pri hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit from the vine. Yeshua, we thank you for your blood that was poured out for us. We remember your sacrifice that you gave for us. And we thank you for all of these things. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Don't drink it all, Kalu. <laughs> he really enjoys the juice part. Yep, and there oh. it goes. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? It's Shabbat. You're supposed to delight, right? <laughs> and the bread, which rem we remember Yeshua was the bread of life. And also that he provides in all seasons, that he gives us above and beyond all we could hope, think, or ask. And so... Jesus lifted up the bread that evening and he prayed this prayer in Hebrew. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the bread from the land. Yeshua, thank you for your body that was given for us and we remember you this evening. In your name we pray, amen. Kala was brought to you by Milk and Honey Bread Company. <laughs> Turn out good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, they always turn out good. Oh, really, mister? <laughs> so this evening, we wanted to bring to you a short word, and yeah, it's a little different setup, and even the format's a little different, and I know my son will probably be enjoying the challah for the rest of the evening, but I wanted to just hone in on something really special because this is a season like no other. You know, it's from Isaiah 58. It really talks about what's happening. You know, I've heard a lot of people talking about, you know, Second Chronicles uh, 7, 14, if my people are called by my name, humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven. But I find something very interesting and we've been, we've been speaking about this very subject uh, with Pastor Stovall and with, and with the church. And I wanted to highlight some of the other verses 
um, that he wasn't able to bring up this past Sunday that I know he is going to cover. But if you read in Isaiah 58, there's almost like pretext to what is going to happen, right? Because Second Chronicles comes right after the temple has been built, all the altars have been laid out, and the Lord consumed every one of those altars by himself with his own fire, and it became the sacrifice. And from that came that context. And even the Lord said during that time, if I come and bring a plague against you, a lot of people kind of forget that, you know, Father God, there, there's two sides, right, to a father. There's the love that he always wants to show, but sometimes because of disobedience, there has to be a disciplinary ship, right? You know, I love my son, but if he breaks the rules of the house, there has to be consequences or else he's going to take over my house. He's going to tell Malky what she can and can't do, and we're not going to be run by a little kid. <laughs> but anyway, what I'm trying to point out is in Scripture, the Lord says, I love those whom I discipline. So there is a love still in the disciplinary ship. But he says, if I bring a plague against you, then you call upon my name and I will forgive you and, and heal your lamb. But check this out in Isaiah uh, 58. It's talking about a fast. And interesting enough, it says, this is the Lord speaking, because He's saying that the people of Israel um, come a time when they're saying, well, we're living righteously. We're obeying all the laws of God and we're doing everything we're supposed to. But there's something about the heart. You know, the heart is really what kind of dictates what the, the true emotions are, right? I mean, you can, you can uh, make, fake it till you make it, as they say. You can like pretend to do something and have the outward expression of, oh, you know, I'm obeying God. Yeah, great. You know, it's like when I, I tell Caleb, hey, Caleb, um, can you go uh, help clean up your room? Oh, yeah, Dad. Like, oh, okay, you're excited to clean up your room? Of course he's not. But it's just that attitude of, yeah, Dad, let's clean it up together. You know, it's it really comes down to his attitude. And the Lord says that you act like you are in, um, righteous, that you're doing things, you're humbling yourself, but yet it's not pleasing. And it says, and they're asking, well, what is that all about? And come down in um, verse 6, the Lord says, no, this is the kind of fasting I want. Free those who are wrongfully imprisoned. Lighten the burden of those who work for you. It's almost like being an unrighteous boss, you know, at work. Uh, you're putting too much uh, time restrictions on on breaks or something. I mean, I'm not saying, you know, you just let your employees go do whatever, but it's like a taskmaster. It's like the what the, um, the Israelites experienced in Egypt, right? When mm -hmm. uh, they were let go of Egypt, it was being tasked with toiling and always having to constantly work. So the Lord is saying, like, be careful how you treat those who work for you. Let the oppressed go free and remove the chains that bind people. Share your food with the hungry and give shelter to the homeless. Give clothes to those who need them and do not hide from relatives who need your hope. Mm. Wow. So relatives maybe that you might not always get along with, according to the Lord, and they need your help, you're supposed to help them. And feed the hungry give clothes to those who need them. I always find it interesting that in God's ways, he's always making sure that the desolate, the, the widow, uh, those who are less fortunate are always well taken care of. And I, I'm really blessed by how um, we as a church, as Celebration Church, are literally reaching into our communities right now uh, to those who are in need of all these things even during this time. And even during uh, COVID, when it was at the height of it, we didn't know who did or didn't have food, and, and we put together a food pantry for those who couldn't afford it to make sure that they're being fed. Because this scripture, Isaiah 58, really kind of sunk home. And now let's go to verse 8 and see as a result of doing those things, taking care of those less fortunate, what the Lord replies with. He says, then your salvation will come like the dawn and your wounds will heal quickly. Your godliness will lead you forward, and the glory of the Lord will protect you from behind. Then you call the Lord 
and I will answer. Yes, I, the Lord, am here. He will quickly reply. I think that is such a powerful expression of the Father, especially if you understand in the Hebrew context, because the Father is saying, when you do these things to take care of others, then I am going to come in and be with you. And there's a word called hineni. Now, the word in Hebrew hineni means everything that is at my disposal is now here for you. It's not just like, oh, hineni, yeah, I'm here. I remember growing up in um, school, I had to say hineni like every day. <laughs> They would call your name in class, and we would use Hebrew like all throughout class. It was it was fun. But it wasn't just like, yeah, I'm here. But it's almost like you have your books, you got your backpack. It's like, yeah, everything that I have that I need is here in class. And then the teacher would literally check. Are you hineneing? <laughs> Are you like telling me the truth? Or did you forget something today? Oh, the dog ate my homework. But it's this hineni expression, the Lord saying, everything at my disposal, everything of heaven that I have at my fingertips is now here for you. And there's three um, times that this word is used as a very powerful demonstration. Uh, you have Abraham. Mm -hmm. Abraham said hineni when he didn't even know what God was going to expect of him. He literally, God called to Abraham. Abraham, out of a relationship with God, said, Hineni. So he already told God, everything that I have is at your disposal. And so God then told him, I'm requiring your son, your one and only son, Isaac. Mm -hmm. And so there was no turning back for Abraham because he said, Hineni. That is the relationship that I have everything and now it's at your disposal. So then you see in scripture, it said, Abraham followed the direction of the Lord and went and did what he said he was going to do. And then the second time that this happens was Moses with the, the burning bush. God calls out from the burning bush, and it wasn't just like, oh, wow, this is pretty fascinating. Oh, yeah, I'm over here, God. Yep, over here. No, it's like Moses was saying, everything at my disposal, you have my full attention. Everything is here because like, what is the sight? It says Moses turned away or turned to the sight because it was an amazing thing. I mean, have you ever seen a, a bush burn and not burn up? And then the third one that it was really used that this word hineni in the context was Samuel. You know, Samuel was a little boy. He was growing up in the temple. And the high priest's sons were really bad dudes. They were doing really bad stuff. And I won't get into that because that's that's for another time. But the young boy Samuel uh, kept hearing his name being called. He like woke up. I mean, I always wondered, like, that would be pretty wild. Like, you're sleeping. You'd be like, Natan, Natan. Like, what, Malky? What do you want? I wake, what? Why are you waking me up? Well, you're calling my name. You know, the priest, the high priest kept telling Samuel, no, I'm not calling you. So he kept going back to bed, back and forth, back and forth. Finally, the high priest goes, I, I think the Lord is calling you. So if you hear that again, say, he nanny. And Samuel gets his life instruction, like for the rest of his life during that time. And now I also want to uh, share that the most important of all the Hineni's, if you can call it that, was when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane in Luke 22. Uh, Jesus is going through, he had just come out of the Passover Seder. We know we just remembered his sacrifice for us with the, the bread and the juice. And he's, he knows what he has to do, but he's asking his father, please take this cup from me. But what does Jesus say in the garden? Not my will, not what I want, but your will be done. That is hineni. Mm -hmm. Not my will. You're giving over your will to the will of someone else, which is the Father God, which also brings us to what season we're in. We're in this uh, 40 days uh, that leads up to one of the most holy uh, times of the year, which is Yom Kippur. And it's called a time of Teshuvah. I know I've spoken about this many times, and you're probably you know, tired of hearing about Shuvah, but just for those of you that haven't, Shuv means turn. You know, a lot of times in English it gets called repentance, you know. Uh, if you're repenting from something, it's like, oh, you're not going to do it anymore. That's, that's bad. But the mentality of Shuv is turn, which means 
when you're doing the wrong thing, actually you're pivoting and walking away from God. You're not walking to him, you're walking away from his ways. So that Hebrew word expression of shuv is, I was going the wrong direction, I was doing the wrong things, but I'm now turning. So this 40 days uh, is supposed to be set aside. You're cleaning house, you're doing like a, a spiritual, you're looking inside yourself like what in here, what inside of this temple isn't pleasing the Lord? Are there things inside of my life that I need to change, that I need to turn towards the Lord, focus on Him, let Him shine His light upon it, and help you to, re to remove? So we've started something um, at the church. We're doing 40 days of fasting and praying, and everyone has a different version of what they're fasting. Some are fasting a meal a day. Um, some are fasting during a certain part of the day. Some are, you know, praying during a certain part because of, uh, you know, food limitations or dietary, but I really encourage you, take this time that's holy, set apart into the Lord, shuv, turn to the Lord. You know, the world is in chaos. No one person can save you except Jesus, Yeshua. He is the only one that can save you. Not a politician, not a head of your state, not a head of, not mayors of our cities. As important it is for us as believers to voice our opinion against what is wrong, what I'm saying is the only true salvation for us is in Him. You know, everyone's talking about a move, but who's going to bring that move? It, 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 we can't do it in and of ourselves unless Father God breathes and His Ruach breathes this life that we need that so desperately our society needs. And it really starts here at home, mm -hmm. which is why I love Shabbat. You know, I, I have my son here. I've got my wife. We're celebrating the presence of the Lord in our home. We're talking about him and we're celebrating his victories. And during this time of Shabbat, it's a, it's a time to encourage our families. And, you know, I've, I've heard some people say, well, you know, I'm with my family all the time. You know, we always have dinner together. Well, that's great. You know, not, not everyone can do that. Uh, someone told me, I celebrate Shabbat every day of the week. I'm like, well, no, because God only calls one day Shabbat. You know, when we have these different days. There's only one that's actually called that, and it's this end of the week that we enjoy. Father God says, come aside. Delight in my day. Delight in what I have for you. So shuv, turn to the Lord. Turn away from the wicked ways and cry out, Hineni, Abba, Father, I am here for you. Everything at my disposal is here for you. You have my full attention. And just wait and watch and see what he will do for you and your family. I promise you that if you will take these scriptures to heart, if you will turn to the Lord during these 40 days, that he will hear you from heaven. It is promised in his word that as you are caring for others, he's going to care for you. If you're lacking in something, turn that right around and what you can do, as little as it can be, like the widow's might, she didn't have much to give, but she gave literally what is equivalent of a penny. That was the best offering that she had. And Jesus said that she gave more than the wealthiest people in the synagogue. So whatever you can do, how little you can do it for others, you know, what you do to the least of these, my brothers, you do unto me. Jesus, that's Jesus' own words. He was always teaching us to help others, to raise up those who are destitute, to help those who are less fortunate than us, and to raise them up so that they can be in a position to help and bless someone else. Because it's really about multiplication. It's really about helping others raise them up so that they can help and raise others up. Right? I mean, when your cup is overflowing, what do you do with the, the overflow? What do you do with the overflow? <laughs> you know, in Psalm 22, he says, you know, I, I raise up my, my cup to, to heavens. You know, the, the, my cup overflows with this new wine. And if, to me, I always see it as when it's overflowing, it's overflowing not just so it runs to the table and, and, and it goes nowhere, but it's almost like as it overflows, it overflows to another cup. So then you take that and you help feed someone else and that other person has a cup and then they're sharing it. And so as we are closing our evening of Shabbat, let's look out for others. Let's take the scriptures that God has given us 
to, re to really impart our lives into others. And listen, if you're going through a difficult time right now, even in your own home, I just pray that the Lord will, will bless you, that he will bring peace, shalom into your households, that as you are setting aside and as you're putting yourself in a position towards the Lord and you're crying out, Hineni, here I am, Father, I need an answer. He will hear you from heaven. So I want to encourage you that no matter where you're at tonight, that he does hear from heaven and he does care for you. So as um, I close out this evening, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. And may the Lord lift up his very countenance upon you and give you his peace. Yivarechecha Adonai v'yishmarecha, ya'er Adonai panevelecha v'yichonecha. Isa Adonai panevelecha v'yasem lecha. Shalom, B'Shem Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Jesus, our Messiah. Amen. amen and Amen. God bless you. Thank you for joining us tonight. You know, my dad usually closes us out, but I thought, you know what? I can do that. Even though my face isn't on the CDs, uh, we are still offering uh, to join us as a world partner. The three CDs that my dad has done, the Roar from Zion, uh, instrumental, the Selah instrumental, and then the Roar from Zion, which I was at. Um, you can't really see me because I was pushing the buttons in the background for, for the words to come up. But it was a great privilege to be a, a part of that. During this season, the only way that we have been able to reach everybody is digitally, virtually. We have not been able to travel. My dad has been um, hoping to, but literally when we came back from Poland, everything from the calendar canceled. So I cannot thank you enough for all of you who have joined as a world partner, who give every week. This has been the sustainability of the ministry. And I just pray the Lord blesses you and your households uh, above and beyond all you could hope, think, or ask, because this has been a huge blessing to our family. But if you do give, just this month, we're sending uh, all three CDs, and that's not to coer coerce you. It's just simply saying thank you so much, and this is how we can thank you from our house to yours for joining us this month as a world partner. So I pray God bless you.